Hello, and welcome to episode 25 of Sarastro's Star Wars Painting Series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Rebel Troopers from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. The Rebel Troopers are fairly straightforward figures to paint, and you will no doubt be familiar with the techniques we'll be using to bring them to life. To add some variety, I'm going to be using a different skin tone for each of the three troopers in the unit. Let's take a look at the painting stages. We'll begin by removing mould lines and priming in the usual way, and I've chosen to prime my troopers in white. We're then going to paint on the base colours, apply some shades, and then the highlights. And I'll be finishing my troopers off with a coat of gloss varnish for the helmet and boots. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to start by painting the skin. I'm going to give the first trooper the palest skin tone, and I'm starting with a base of Bugman's Glow. For my next trooper, I'm going to produce a slightly darker skin colour, and we'll begin with a base of Gorthor Brown. And for my last trooper, I'll be providing the darkest skin tone, using the same colours that we did for Lando in episode 22, which means I'll be starting with some Monfang Brown mixed with a little Macridge Blue. Now we have a nice range of base skin colours, we're ready to paint the clothes and accessories. I'm going to begin by painting the belt and holster with some Mornfang Brown. For the trousers, I'm using a 2 to 1 mix of Dawnstone and Carrick Stone. For the waistcoat and boots, we can use a dark grey by mixing some Mechanicus Standard Grey with black, or we could simply use Vallejo's German Grey. And I'm now going to paint the shirt with some Fenrisian grey. Some parts of the shirt are a little tricky to get the brush to neatly, so we should be prepared for some retouching along the way. Next, I'm going to paint the aerial on the helmet with some lead belcher. I'm then going to create a roughly equal mix of lead belcher and black for the dark portion of the gun. And for the tip, I'm using Stormhost Silver. I'm also using this for the belt buckle.
I'm now going to use some pure black for the black segment of the helmet. I'm also going to paint the helmet straps with this. Finally, I'm using some ceramite white for the chin cup. And I'm also going to use this to clean up the helmet. With the base colours neatly applied, we're ready to do some shading. I'm now going to apply four different shades to the miniature, starting with some pure non oil for the waistcoat, boots and the gun. We needn't to be too concerned over the neatness here as we'll be going over these areas with some highlights soon enough. I'm then going to thin some non oil with around four parts of medium, and with this more delicate mix, I'm going to shade the helmet, shirt, belt, and trousers. Next, I'm going to use some pure Agrax Earthshade for the holster. And finally, for all of the skin tones, I'm going to use some Reichland Flesh Shade mixed with a couple of drops of Dragonhoff Nightshade. Once dry, we're ready to add some highlights. In no particular order, I'm going to begin by highlighting the trousers, using the original Dawnstone and Carrickstone mix. I'm naturally focusing the strongest highlights on the knee area.
This can then be lightened with the addition of some screaming skull in one or two stages. I'm now going to highlight the shirt by first reapplying some Fenrisian Grey. Here I'm covering the entire upturned surface of the arm, but leaving the underside shaded. and I'm going to pick my way around some of the creases on the left arm. And I'm lightening this with a little white. For the waist jacket and boots, I'm using some Eshin Grey. We only need a few small highlights here to enhance the naturally occurring highlights we can see caused by the contours of the fabric. Because the boots are quite shiny, you may wish to lighten these highlights further with the addition of some white. I've chosen to leave the black section of the helmet pure black, and simply let the gloss varnish provide some natural highlights and reflections for us later on. Next, I'm going to highlight the holster with a little scrag brown. For the pistol, we could apply a few highlights using Stormhost Silver mixed with some Carrick Stone in a 2 to 1 ratio. This could also be used on the aerial. And for the white of the helmet, I'm using some pure white and keeping the consistency pretty thin. 
Here, I want to apply the paint in thin layers, drawing the paint upwards to the frontal section to create some subtle variation of tone, with the lightest being at the top. On the front of the helmet, you can see I'm focusing the highlight on the central section, leaving the slightly grubbier white showing more at the sides. Finally, I'm going to highlight the skin. For the palest tone, I'm going to highlight up with Cadian Flesh Tone, Gizla Flesh, and ending with a few small highlights of Flayed One Flesh. So, here's the Cadian Flesh Tone that's going to cover most of the skin. And now the Kislev flesh for the main areas of highlight. And finally, a few small hits of Flayed One Flesh for the extreme highlights, hitting the knuckles, cheekbones and top of the nose. And this completes the pale skin tone. I'm now going to highlight the mid-coloured skin tone. To do this, I'm going to use the exact same trilogy of colours that we did for the pale skin, except I'm going to mix a little Gawthor brown into each one. So, I'm starting with some Cadian flesh tone mixed with some Gawthor brown in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio for my first highlight. <laughs> And now the Kislev flesh also mixed with some Gawthor brown. And finally, the Flayed One Flesh, once again mixed with a little Gawthor Brown. And here we can see the reasonably subtle but marked difference in the skin tones we've produced so far. Finally, I'm going to highlight the darker skin tone, and I'll be using the same recipe used for Lando Calrissian in episode 22. That means I'll be lightening the base skin tone, Mournfang Brown with Macridge Blue, with gradual additions of a 2 to 1 mix of Taolite Okra and Gawthor Brown. So, here on my left I have the base tone mix and on the right, the highlight mix of Taolite Okra and Gawthor Brown. And I'm going to simply add the highlight colour to the base colour in a couple of stages.
I'm now using the Pure Highlights Mix. and I'm going to add a touch of white to produce my final highlight. Once we're happy with the highlights, we're ready for some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes, and we can either mix an off-white using Screaming Skull and White, or use something like Vallejo's Ivory to paint the whites of the eyes. And for the pupil and iris, we could use black or mix a dark grey. I'm using Vallejo's German grey. We can now go ahead and paint the bases. For my veteran elites, I've also chosen to add a little battle damage, using the same colours that we used for the stormtroopers way back in episode 1. And now we can protect the troopers with an application of matte varnish, followed with a coat of gloss varnish for the helmet and boots. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, then any likes, comments and subscriptions would be much appreciated. You may notice that the pace of my output has increased lately, which is purely thanks to the amazing patrons who are financing the time I put into creating these tutorials, which would simply not be possible otherwise. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!